Welcome back to Talladega. 79 laps to go. Watch our uh, Bud aerial coverage. Helicopter mounted high above the Talladega Super Speedway. New sheriff in town, Dale Earnhardt Jr. has taken the lead. And we'll show you how it happened. Well, he's been pushing and shoving and doing everything he could to get that thing out front. <laughs> he knocked poor old Matt Kenson's rear bumper slam off. Ward Burton pointed him through on the inside. And then Mike Wallace, something let go on that white 09 in the high groove. You know, Jeff, Jeff Gordon in 24, he just barely had one lane at the top to go by. Yeah, that's uh... And Mike Wallace has made a pit stop and come back on track. I was trying to see what that was because he came to pit road and he went back out. So uh, I'm not sure if he had an engine problem or maybe a tire go down. Jimmy Johnson has led as many laps as his car number of Old Spice lap leaders. Yeah, Mike Wallace is back out there, and uh, he's up to speed. Uh, so whatever that was, I think he may have had a problem with a, maybe a tire problem. And Dale Earnhardt Jr. has now led the last six Talladega Winston Cup races. And that car just seems like once it gets in the front, it's a barrier between it and the rest of the field. They just can't get to it. And that's about the way his Bush car was yesterday as well when he won the race. And you watch him. I mean, everybody else is protecting the bottom, protecting, you know, they got to have somebody to help them. And he just sits out there, runs where he wants to. He runs high, he runs low, and everybody says, you want to run with me, you're going to have to follow me. If you missed it yesterday, Earnhardt Jr. was leading Joe Nemechek when a caution came out with a handful of laps to go. And he won the race under caution and ran out of gas half a lap later. We're making a charge here now. Here comes the 24 car down underneath. Without a lot of help. His teammates He's about got two car lengths back. Yeah. Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy's back there. Boy, those two cars look almost identical from up here. Bill Elliott, among active drivers. 52 races has led 523 laps here. That's a lot of miles. About three races are better. Three 500 mile races are better total. That's what that eight car reminds me of back in the 80s when Bill had such a dominant car at Daytona and Talladega. He could do exactly what Dale Jr. is doing. You just couldn't race him. You could follow him, but you couldn't pass him or race him. Remember the day here he came from two laps down to win without making up a lap under caution. He did it all under the green. Under the green. That was incredible. He was running faster than everybody else was in a draft. He was running that fast by himself. Yeah, he has eight bud poles here, Bill Elliott, and a lot of them was right in the road. Now, that's something Dale Jr. hadn't seen for a while. Somebody pulled down and passed him. But look, at he goes out there. Now, he's out there way high by himself. Jeff Gordon get credited for leading that lap. Second one he's led today. Junior in position to move up in the NASCAR top 10. He came in here third and he could move to second. Kurt Busch has uh, had difficulties and currently runs one lap down. Busch came in here second to the points. Michael, he was fourth and he's had trouble. A number of people have had trouble. Tell you what, there's about 150,000 people here. I don't think anybody's sitting down right now watching this battle between Jeff Gordon, Dale Earnhardt Jr. About like the battle last week at Texas. I mean, they're cheering and waving and like it's the last lap. And there's Greg Biffle right up in the middle of it. <laughs> Tape of flying in all directions. <laughs> that, car, that car is a, it's raggedy and I'm telling you. He's right there fighting for the lead. I have to say, he's, that's about as good an effort as I've seen from anybody here at Talladega to go through what he's been through today and still right up there racing with him. Look at these people. <laughs> they love it. Look at Biffle's old car back there. <laughs> Parts are flying everywhere. And they talk about aerodynamics at Talladega and Daytona. Look at that thing. Just feathers flying in the wind. All they've done is put water in it. <laughs> Here's Matt. Well, Mike, all the non-DEI teams came into Talladega with a lot of motivation to end the Dale Earnhardt Incorporated streak. Some teams went to greater lengths to try to find out the DEI advantage over others. In fact, 
Remember back to the Twin 125 when Steve Park's car was overheating, water was coming out the overflow vent at the base, at the rear corner of the right side of the hood. One team took our video in slow mode to trying to find out how well that water was going up over the greenhouse. Another team on Thursday at the Daytona 500, remember, Michael Walters' winning car went to Daytona USA for display. One team sent two crew members down with a tape measure and camera in hand. They took enough pictures to write a book. They also took enough measurements. They said, hey, look, the car's on display. We paid our $750 to go in. Let's take advantage of it. They weren't the only team, though, that I'm told. A couple others did the same thing, just trying to find that DEI advantage. And, and when you think back to Bill Elliott, we were talking about him earlier, we all, all, everybody looked under the hood, looked under the hood, said, Ernie's got something in that engine nobody else has. In reality, when it was all said and done years later, he had a small race car. They had narrowed the car up, made the car a little bit smaller than everybody else's, and actually he had a great aero advantage. Now, I would buy into that with the DEI cars if we didn't have the debt gum many templates today. But I tell you, that's interesting, Matt, about the water because you can't see the air, but you can see a liquid. We used to come down here and put drops of oil on the car and see what the flow of the oil was around the greenhouse of the car to the rear spoiler, make changes based on that. Because, again, even though they claim you can, Matt, you can't see air. Exactly, Larry, and a lot of teams felt like, you know, you can't go into another team's locker room and see their game plan, but taking our video, they were just going to try to use that and see, like if they were in the back room of the wind tunnel while the DEI cars were just trying to see how they might be manipulating that air over the car. Three wide for the lead. Marlon wants it from Earnhardt Jr. and Jeff Gordon on the bottom. Marlon has the help from that other Dodge, Kenny Wallace, in the 23. We've got to be careful right here coming off that corner. Three wide like that. Dale Jr. stuck in the middle. Right, everybody has help. It's three by three. Ty Norris talking to Dale Jr. Remember the old saying, four cars under a blanket when they get real tight on the short track at Nashville? This is 12 cars under a blanket. It's crowded under there. I mean, we have about 20 cars within less than a half a second of each other. <laughs> Biffle's old car is a pig in a blanket. <laughs> <laughs> yes, look. But she's good one, good Nita. up there where she's running. <laughs> but she's a pretty pig, oh, yeah. isn't she? <laughs> Show pig. 